ECDL Advanced Lesson 5 Creating Tables. Now, just to remind you where we're up to, in the last lesson, which was Lesson 4, we created a database, but we hadn't created any tables for it. So we're going to carry on from where we were up to. So let's explain how to create tables. Tables can be created using a wizard. A wizard gives step-by-step -step instructions for the initial setting up and applies default formatting such as date formats and number formats. Alternatively, a table can be created in Design View which allows a freehand for formatting. So let's get back to where we were at the end of the last lesson. The new database Antiquities shows the database name in the title bar at the top. A default new table, Table 1, is shown in the Datasheet view with one field named ID. This could be used as the first table in the database, but this exercise will demonstrate a more general method of adding new tables. First, close the default table, Table 1, by right-clicking on the Table 1 tab, and then selecting Close from the shortcut menu. As an aside, the databases that have been supplied to go with this course, they all use the default tabbed document format. So therefore, all open objects are displayed in the same window with tabs along the top to be able to select them. The functions we've just seen, which was close and also save and view, are easily available by right-clicking the relevant tab. Now, it's also worth mentioning that the exercises will still work if you use the alternative overlapping windows format, but as I'm sure you'll expect, some of the screenshots will look different. If we want to change the format, click the File tab and select Options. The format is set on the current database page, so let's select that and it'll be within the Document Window Options section. So here we can have overlapping windows, tabbed windows, or display document tabs. OK, let's swat away this dialog box and get back to where we were. If we display the Create tab across the top and click the Table Design button, a new blank table will be opened in Design View. This table will not be named until it is saved. OK, in the first row, type Artifact in the Field Name column. Press Tab to move to the next column. Short Text appears in the Data Type column press Tab. The cursor is now in the Description column. Enter the words Type of Artifact and then press Tab. For the next field name, enter the words Date Sold. Then press Tab. Click on the drop-down list in the Data Type field and select Date Stroke Time from the selection. Press Tab to move into the Description column and type the words Date the Artifact was Sold. And then press Tab again. Enter Price as the third field name. Then Tab. 
then select currency as the data type and in description enter selling price. The next field name is quantity sold. The data type is number and its description is number of artifacts sold. For the next field, enter information. The data type is going to be long text and its description is history and identifying features. Now, just so that you're aware, long text is used when the field is likely to contain more than 255 characters because the maximum allowed for short text is 255 characters. Okay, for the final field, enter the name web address. Its data type is hyperlink. And its description is related website. With a question mark after it. Okay. Next, let's display the Home tab, and if we select the View button, and then Datasheet View, you'll be prompted to save the table. Click Yes, and then save the table as Artifact Sales. And then click OK. As can be seen, there's a prompt to create a primary key for the table. We will discuss primary keys at a later date. OK, for the moment, click No. And we've saved the table without creating a primary key. OK, so the fields that we set up, which were Artifact, date sold, price, quantity sold, information and web address all appear now and what we're able to do is to enter the details for each particular record. Okay, we've reached the end of this lesson when we've discussed creating tables. Please close the table and then close the database. OK, that's the end of Section 1 on Fundamentals. Your job now is to test your understanding by attempting Lesson 6, which is a revision exercise. And this you will find in the CIA training textbook. OK, wishing you success with that. And I look forward to seeing you next time when we're going to start Section 2 which will be on the topic of field properties. Okay, I look forward to seeing you then.